This is the most dangerous place on Earth, the world's most militarized border, and South Korea's number one tourist attraction. Welcome to the weirdest place I've ever been, the DMZ. Good morning, today I'm here in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, and I'm heading to the demilitarized zone, also known as the most militarized border on Earth. And surprisingly, this border with the most secretive country in the world is just 24 kilometers from here. To put this into perspective, that puts Seoul closer to North Korea than JFK Airport to Central Park. Now imagine JFK is filled with America's number one enemy, 2 million foreign soldiers and thousands of tanks. Pretty scary, right? But that's a reality on the ground here. So how come millions of people every year, including myself today, visit what former President Bill Clinton called the scariest place on Earth? To find out, we first need a quick history brief on Korea. During World War II, the Korean Peninsula was under Japanese control. But once Japan lost the war, the peninsula was split under American control in the south and Soviet control in the north. And after the war, the country was planned to be reunited as a single Korea. But that never happened, because the Soviet Union wanted the country to be a communist dictatorship, while America wanted a capitalist democracy. And this brings us to today, where both countries are still technically at war, tensions are high, and the artificial separation line still exists. After a short 30 minute ride from Seoul, we start to approach this line. So here, over the river, is North Korea. Here is only two kilometers of each other. Before entering the restricted military area, we make a brief stop right outside the border. But to say the least, I didn't expect what we got to see next. What the hell is going on here? I don't know how to feel about it. What the hell is this? Okay, so this is definitely one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. So we're in one of the world's most dangerous places, the world's most militarized border. At the same time, we have a memorial for a slain American soldier. And we have the border with North Korea over there. And we have an amusement park right here with a full parking lot, more so than Best Buy on Black Friday. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is weird. But the music's good. Yes, so again, we're just a hundred yards from the restricted military area in a resort called Imjingang. And one of the first things we see is this, a memorial ceremony for two US Army officers that were killed and decapitated by North Korean soldiers. And while this clearly shows the reality of this place being an ongoing war, the sight of tourists taking selfies gives it a bit of a theme park atmosphere. And this feeling is amplified by a literal full-blown amusement park right around the corner. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is all of this? What the hell? I have to go back to the bus, but like... Am I the only one that's stunned by this? Is this normal? Visiting this place is leaving me confused. How are families visiting the border, playing soccer next to an Air Force memorial, riding the Super Viking just opposite an oppressive dictatorship, and having a K-pop concert while soldiers are risking their lives patrolling? It will take me till the end of this trip to finally understand, but first, we have to go in deeper. Time to enter the restricted military area. Our first stop, a secret North Korean tunnel. So we've just made it out of the third infiltration tunnel. This was kind of a, a very surreal experience because you end up being like a hundred meters off of actual North Korea, which is kind of insane. So what happened is I, I couldn't take any footage, but I found some footage, official footage online, which I'll be able to use hopefully. Um, essentially you go downhill 11 degrees. So it's a kind of very steep slope. This is built by the South Korean side and it goes down like a hundred meters below ground and then you kind of access the North Korean built side, which is the secret tunnel they were about to use to reach over there, 
about 28 kilometers away from here, which is Seoul. So they were heading to the capital of South Korea and they built this tunnel using solely dynamite. So you can imagine this is a very narrow and a very eerie looking tunnel. So you have to crouch through it. It's filled with water all over, very humid, very dry, very cold. And then you reach the end of the tunnel and you have a kind of barricade with a hole in it. And you look through the hole and there's another barricade with a hole and you continue looking and you see the North Korean border. This is a very weird spot to be because yes, they have found this tunnel and they have secured this tunnel, but there are more than 20 more out there somewhere and we don't know where they are. We don't know how long they are and we don't know when they're gonna be used. And then you just have a tank. Then we head to the Dora Observatory. Now, let me quickly speed through this because the next place is much more enlightening. But here we essentially have a view of the border and North Korea's third largest city. Hidden beneath the rugged terrain also lies something more dark. One of the world's largest mass graves with 20,000 American and Korean soldiers that lost their lives defending the South during the Korean War. Back in the bus, we head to Unification Village, a town with over 400 permanent civilian inhabitants situated in the middle of the military zone. And you might wonder, why would someone choose to live here? The answer, to be close to the separated families in the north. See, when the war ended, most people here were separated from their remaining family, and they chose to live here so that when bridges are rebuilt and border lines disappear, they'll be closer to home than ever before. And I think this helps us understand a bit of what we saw earlier. For most young South Koreans, seeing the news, it is very easy to solely view North Korea as this crazy distant country with missiles. But it takes visiting the border, seeing the prayers for reunification, and meeting separated family members to realize that the North Koreans are also the long lost brothers and sisters of the South. And while I still find it slightly odd to buy DMZ themed t-shirts, mugs, barbed wire and more, I can see why the DMZ is such a strong pull for families. While they bring their children to the amusement park to have fun, they also confront them with a dream of reunification. In a country that has grown so accustomed to living with defense systems, shelters and sirens going off every time the neighbor shoots a missile, it seems more important than ever to instill a sense of hope. To build a conscious understanding that life doesn't have to be this way and that one day, maybe, the Korean people can live united once again. To most, this seems like a far-fetched dream, but here on the ground, it's one that nevertheless people seem to hold. When I came here, I thought the DMZ would be a story of horror and sadness, and in a way it still is, but it turns out it is equally one of hope and unity and the feeling that one day this place will not be run over by tanks and armed soldiers, but generations of families uniting for the first time.